Pop quiz. You know what the most important meal of the day is? It's definitely not breakfast. It's all about those appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, snacks. I don't care how you say it. The appetizer is the food of life. Stick around, we've got some brilliant chefs sharing their favorite recipes that will make your cocktail parties pop and your taste buds explode. Welcome back. I have to admit, I'm a big fan of the bread monk because he's a monk who bakes bread, and that's pretty cool. Father Dominic Garamone says he learned how to bake in his mother's kitchen. And when he's not baking or teaching, he can usually be found in the Abbey Herb Garden. Today, he's showing us how to make homemade cheesy cheddar chive breadsticks that are so good, they might just be a sin. We're going to explore some side breads, breads that go alongside a cup of soup or a salad or something like that. We'll start with the braided cheddar chive breadsticks for when you want something kind of special for a buffet table. Now, cheddar and chives are an irresistible combination in my opinion. So, I have two cups of flour in the, in the bowl and I'm gonna add this package of yeast, fast rising yeast, and then some salt. And then I'm gonna add the liquid at 120 up to 130 degrees. That higher temperature is what's necessary for this fast rising method. And we start stirring it in right away. This is not the whole amount of flour for the recipe. It's only a portion of it. But the yeast with the smaller particles and with the ascorbic acid added to it and the partial amount of uh, flour, then begin, you look, it goes together right away. <laughs> I'm like, I could abandon this right away. I could have done it all with my hand practically, okay? And we just kind of mix that all together and it's ridiculously sticky and that's okay, normal. It's different from the other methods we've done before with traditional yeast, okay? Now that that's all mixed together, we're just gonna give this a little 10 minute rest and then we're gonna start adding the additional ingredients. Now, we're gonna add our cheese and chives now while it's still easy to, really easy to knead because the dough is so soft and so hydrated. If you want a mild cheese, put it on top rather than on the inside of the dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing all that in. The other thing that happens with that 10 minute rest is to make sure you don't add too much additional flour and make a too stiff dough. That's a common problem, okay? So now, this is probably ready to just get it out on the counter, okay? Look at how this is kneading up, just beautifully. I'm not gonna need a whole lot more flour to add to this at all, okay? The recipe will say you might need as much as another cup in certain environments and at uh, certain times of year or if your flour has a little less protein in it. But as you can see, or sometimes it's because your cheese is wetter, okay? One time I made this and I needed to add more flour because I put the chives in wet because I just washed them before I chopped them up. So we're gonna need this for about five minutes. You don't need to watch that. And then afterwards, we're gonna cover it up and let it rest an additional 10 minutes. And that takes the place of the first rise in a traditional uh, recipe with active dry yeast. That takes the place of the first rise and we're just gonna have uh, this little, a second 10 minute rest and then we'll be able to get straight to uh, shaping. So my dough got its 10 minute rest. It poofed up slightly, but not a great visual difference. I did get some rolled out already. So you're just gonna roll it under your hand. One hand to start, and then two. Nice, even pressure. And then as you roll, you pull out gently. We're gonna sew three different ways to shape these. So let's start with a twist. I'm gonna put it here. We're gonna make a little arc with it. Hold on to this end, gently. Roll it, roll it, roll it. One more time. Roll it, roll it, pick it up. Boing. There we go. Twists right together by itself. And then you pinch the ends. And then up it goes into the pan, okay? So let's do another one. Holding one end, roll, 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 
roll, pick it up, does its own little twist, okay, and then pinchy pinchy on the end, and into the pan, okay? Now, that's one way. Another way, if you really, really want to go high end, is to divide the dough into each portion, 16 portion of the dough, into threes and make a full-on braid. Okay, but this dough is easy to work with because of the cheese. Now, I tried to eye these portions even as best as best I could. Uh, if you were really making something fancy, like you're gonna serve these to, you know, you're gonna make these for the Iowa State Fair, or your mother-in-law, or Martha Stewart's coming over for supper, then you can weigh the dough out, okay? Actually divide the dough, you know, weigh the dough, divide it by 16, make that many portions, etc. But chances are, if you've got teenagers in your family, these are not gonna stay on the plate long enough to make a positive ID. They're not gonna watch whether they're perfectly even or not. So I folded that over and I kind of pinched it together, lay the third one over it, and then I begin to braid. Now I don't want to pull hard, okay? And remember that with braiding, you want to try to keep the same side, the upper side of the roll, on the top. Don't flip it over as you go. And so I do not want them to be too tightly braided. Okay, I get a little bit at the bottom, I kind of tuck it under, I press it together. You really do have to kind of press it together well, even wet the ends with a little bit of milk if you have to. Okay, so that can go into the pan. We are going to cover these and let them rise for 30 to 45 minutes or until nearly doubled. At that point, brush them with egg whites and sprinkle them with sesame seed and they go into a preheated oven at 375 degrees for about 15 minutes. And so you'll wanna make sure that these can burn very quickly because of the cheese and because they're smaller and thinner. You wanna be very careful about uh, keeping an eye on them. The interior temperature of a fully baked loaf of bread or a breadstick is the same, about 195 degrees. So make use of your instant read thermometer to make sure that the interior temperature is at least 190 degrees. That's a fully baked breadstick and a fully baked loaf of bread. Now, I recommend that you serve these, if you've just got the little flat ones or even the twists, those look fine in an ordinary basket. But if you go to the trouble to make the braided ones, they look so beautiful. They look great when they're standing up in a round, taller basket or in a, like, in a, a stoneware crock and standing up on the buffet. They really make a pretty display. All right, we're talking chicken. Of course we are. How many times a week do you have chicken, do you think? Easily two, maybe three. Yeah, I was solid three. I think yeah. solid three. Yeah. In my house, it's like, it's so easy. It's, you know, it's versatile. Yeah. I can do something different every, you know. It's, every it's like a common to. denominator yeah. thing, you know, especially also if you're entertaining, you know, you may or may not have red meat eaters coming over. Some people may or may not be into fish or seafood. Yeah, it's safe. It's safe. And versatile, and you can do so many different things with it, so yeah. yeah absolutely, yeah. but. You go into the supermarket, yeah. right? We all have that moment where it's just it's just you and the chicken breast. Yeah. <laughs> and you're trying to channel inspiration, but you know, <laughs> there they are, <laughs> laying there. And last week I was in the grocery store and I was standing there and I was looking at like this and the poultry guy, the meat counter guy yeah, yeah. came over and he's like, what do you need? And I was like, inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you need totally inspiration, right? Yeah, right? If I need inspiration, then we know you need inspiration. Exactly. So Katie and I are gonna share some of our go-to, our favorite go-to chicken recipes yeah. with you today to inspire you to get out of the chicken rut out of the and chicken enjoy rut. something different and fun. Yeah. Right? Yes, and it. delicious, of course. So on the, on the stove, I just have melted a little bit of butter. What I'm gonna add to this butter is some garlic cloves. And this is the, the trick with this. I'm just gonna smash a whole garlic clove. Put it under the, you know, the, a heavy knife. Heavy knife. And just smash it. Now it's ready. Now the oils are gonna release and it's gonna go into the butter, but not all over the chicken. Right. So it's garlic butter, so you're not getting chunks of garlic in the bite. Right. You're getting the flavor. And also it saves you from that extraordinarily delightful pain in the thing of mincing garlic. <laughs> so while that's just kind of steeping, let's skewer some more chicken pieces, add them to this okay. parchment line baking sheet. How big did you cut these? Bite size. And the reason I came up with this is because I had these leftover cake pop sticks from 
making real cake pops. So of I had like, you did. I, of course I did. Of course you did. I'm telling you, they come in these big bags of cake pop sticks. So you're always going to have like a dozen left over. Right, or because 20. you know who's going to make all of those cake pops? <laughs> <laughs> As I've been known to do. And yeah. can I also say, as somebody who does not have cake pops in their house. Well, you should um, get them because they're sold everywhere. Yeah, sold in everywhere. In the baking aisle. But um, wooden skewers? Yeah, you could use you wooden know, skewers. Obviously, obviously yeah. if you had wooden picks. So I seasoned with salt and pepper. That's all I needed to do there. That's so, that was so easy. So now we've got the garlic butter. Yep, yep. I'll brush all these. So you take a brush. And you just really want to get a little coating on here. Because then at the next step after this is to roll the chicken pops in Really good quality, and I have to stress that, good quality Parmesan cheese. Because um, that's really what's gonna come through, the flavor of the cheese. Doors. Yeah, and the other way I've done this too, is I've literally like in my oh, own a dip kitchen, in a swirl. I go there, and then I go into the cheese. Oh, that's so, efficient. And you know what else like is strikes me as you're do doing this? Boom, this is a boom. great, great um, bring your kids into the kitchen recipe. Yeah. Because the skewering they can do, yeah. the dipping, the rolling, and you yeah. can, you as can do As long as you're not really touching the chicken and then, you know, putting their hands you in You just the have to, they yeah, eat. they have to you know to wash their hands. rolling them oh, okay. the cheese if you want. And this is, like, like you could do, like, an assembly line, right? Like, yeah. you do this. Absolutely. So that would be good. And wouldn't this be great for a party? This would be a, I keep thinking this would be an incredible, like, Appetizer. Test around, have it out. People can just like and have a drink in one hand. Yeah. Cake pop in the Cake. other. <laughs> and then what I did at home, I went back and kind of put more cheese on right before it went in the oven. Because it kind like of right absorbs a little bit. So you can yeah. get that second layer. Get going a second on. layer. And yeah. that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in the oven at 375 or 400 degrees, and because they're Bite size, they only take like 15 minutes. All right, so they're golden brown. The cheese is gonna be like nutty wow. and awesome. This and then I like to serve these with like a warm marinara sauce or a pizza sauce or something like that. Store bought, so, homemade, depends on your day? It depends. Like if I have that, that my batch that's in the freezer, yes. I'm so excited about that. Um, and then if I have um, store bought, I'm like not opposed to store bought. Wanna try? Oh, so good. First of all, the cheese has got, it makes a beautiful crust. Mm -hmm. And it has that like, just what you said, that salty, savory pop. It's unbelievably delicious. And it caramelized and got nutty. Yes, exactly. And then and then you dip mm. it into this like hot sauce and it's sort of, it's like a pizza and a chicken and... And um, garlic bread. And the like garlic all bread. All mixed yes. into one it's bite. It's like an Italian, it's like an Italian trattoria in a bite. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm, of I'm, course I'm it sticking is. by that. And it's like a I'm trattoria. Four ingredients to the trattoria. Oh my God. And it's so easy. So, and have fun with this. Seriously, put this out for a party, the warm sauce. You're lucky that. if they get moved to a plate at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, this, is, this is, and it's so easy. It's open mm. up. Tell me that this didn't just kind of like take chicken to another level with this just really, four ingredients really, in 20 really, minutes. really good. Jack, Charlie, I'm so sorry you're not here. <laughs> Robin will send me home with some cake pops and I'll make them for you. For all of today's great recipes, go to myblueprint.com.